Only in America is what they say, and I say only in St. Paul is where Red Bull crash ice is really getting gnarly. Look at that huge start ramp up there, one of the gnarliest ones we've ever had. Let's go up there and have a look. Oh well, telling you that I'm scared of heights won't help because I gotta do it anyway. And uh, there's plenty of little features or big features on the track that make me nervous, but there's no excuses. I just gotta go. I don't know if I'm getting a bit too old for this because this thing back there scared the shit out of me. Coming up to the cathedral step up, I just wanted to slow down, but you, you can't because you're obviously in a race. So now uh, we have a relaxed uphill section and I just hope it's not gonna get worse after this because otherwise I'll retire. This must be the toughest section in Red Bull Crash Dice history. After all that skating up there, you're going into the U-turn and have to accelerate again from zero. And after all that, I have no oxygen left in my head and I need to go into the wall right. Let's see if I survive. I would say this track separates the men from the boys and also the guys who trained during the summer and those who didn't, because those who didn't will not make it over the last jumps. That's why I go training now. So welcome to St. Paul, Minnesota, the location for the second start on the Red Bull Crash Dice World Championships. This is the third year in a row that this beautiful capital city has hosted an event in the Crash Dice calendar. And a record-breaking crowd of 120,000 spectators watch as their heroes did battle for championship points. It was to be another disappointing event for the current champ, Derek Wedge, as he yet again was eliminated in the round of 64. As with the opening round in Finland, the 2012 champion, Karl Kroxel, failed to make it past the quarterfinals. With the elimination of the two big guns, it would pave the way for some of the lesser experienced skaters to make a mark on the tour. In the first semi-final, it was America's Cameron Naz and Reed Whiting alongside Finn, Mika Yukamainen and the opening tour stop winner, Marco Delago from Austria. And it was Delago and Naz who got out to an early lead and never really looked back, both advancing to the final. In the second semi-final was another American, this time in the shape of Andrew Bergeson, who led most of the way from Scott Croxall. However, Croxall did manage to overtake Bergeson at the wall ride, and they both advanced through. Bergeson was delighted to reach his first final ever. So on to the final and there were high hopes for a home win as there were two Americans in the starting gate. And it was Cameron Naz who got off to the best start, leading early on with Marco Delago hot on his heels. As they reached the sweeping right hand of the agile, Austrian was able to slip on the inside of Naz, who then managed to lose his footing and more importantly second place to a hot-footed Scott Croxel. So it's two wins from two events for Marco Delago.
it feels great and it feels even more great because it's a totally different track that's kind of now I know I can do it in like diff on different tracks not just one kind of like the rough tracks and I'm quite happy to be leader of the world championship right now after two races is it's just stunning for me. Yeah, I mean, there was tons of upsets tonight. Uh, lots of the top guys uh, fell out early, and um, it looks like the young guns are on the podium today. So I'm just happy to be up there with them. It feels great. It was even a little icing on top of the cake, uh, being able to race with my teammate Andrew. That's a first for me, and it's, it was just an incredible experience. Everybody cheering for you, and it's just ecstasy out there. So once again, it's Delago on the top step of the podium, and he has now a commanding lead at the halfway mark of the Tour. Moscow, Russia now waits the skaters for the penultimate stop of the Tour, and you can catch all the action from there on this show very soon.